Well, hello and welcome to another video. And in the last video, we saw how to fetch the data from the API using Rapid library. In this video, we're going to basically insert data into the database using Rapid library. So to do that, we are going to use a floating action button. Let, let me show you in main activity. If you go to XML file, we have a floating action button. So what we want is that when we click on this button, I want to open a dialog box and after entering values to the dialog box, uh, I'll be able to insert the data into the database. So let's see how to open a dialog box first. So let me close everything else uh, apart from this main activity.kt. So I'm going to uh, take on click listener to the, uh, on this uh, uh, FAB. So FAB dot set on click listener and I'm going to create a method called uh, submit okay open a dialog box or sub, uh, something open submit dialog anything that you uh, like and create a function for that and let me just uh, close this uh, get user. Now here we'll uh, write functionality to open a dialog box. Uh, so first of all, we'll take a variable for view equals to layout inflator uh, layout inflator dot from and we need to pass context. We can just pass this dot inflate. We have uh, an, uh, an XML called submit dialog. So we can just pass our dot layout dot submit dialog. Uh, as a second parameter, we just had to pass null as a view group. So now that we have this uh, layout file in this view variable, we can create a variable for dialog equals to alert dialog dot builder, and we can pass this context and dot uh, set view, and we can pass this view that we created here dot set title and we are going to write something like submit new user that dot create to create the dialog box and then i'm going to take another variable which will be a dialog instance dialog instance and i'll use this to call dialog dot show now uh, we can uh, use this view to access those uh, uh, every fields that we have inside that dialog box. So view dot let, let me just show you what fields we have uh, because I haven't shown you yet. So let me just show you open submit dialog dot XML and we have enter your name, email and password and this little button. So I have this uh, in text input edit text uh, all the all all of three and i have a material button so uh, i change some things let me just undo it okay so this three fields and a button so to access those we can write view dot apply sorry v dot apply and here we can pass we can uh, have variables for them button equals to uh find view by id this will be uh, uh this will have type of material button because i have used material button instead of simple button and r dot id dot uh submit button i think yeah submit button then variables for those edit text so edit name actually i'm just going to uh, right name equals to find view by id uh, which will be uh, text input edit text text input edit text here it is and r dot id dot uh, name id yeah and i'm just gonna repeat this line uh, for email and email id and for password as well 
if we have password 80 so now we can call a button a click listener on this button so put btn dot set on click listener and here we can call our api so to do that i'm gonna create another method oh, <clears throat> sorry create another method uh submit user and I'm, I'm actually going to pass name dot uh text dot to string as a first parameter then email dot text dot to string what will what this will do is that it will uh, fetch whatever written in this added text it will convert that to text and to string uh and then password dot text dot to string and finally when this method is called i finished its work whatever uh, the code inside it it, it, it finished up calling that code i want the dialog box to close itself so i can call dialog dot dismiss uh, here so here it is now we can create this function submit user and it will have uh, let me just name uh, rename the parameters name email and password password and I'm really sorry if you are getting a background noise actually I'm in the university so some students are celebrating for something so I'm really sorry for that and now uh, we need to have an endpoint to submit the user as well so go to an api interface that we have created which we use for calling endpoints right so now we are going to submit values to the database so here we'll use post method so obviously we'll call post and notation and uh, the name of the endpoint will be insert user dot php in my case insert user dot php now uh, we are getting values from a form so there's another uh, annotation that we will need is that add form url encode it now we can create a function to submit user submit user and inside which will have three parameters one for name email and id so the first uh, to pass the parameter we use another annotation of field which will be the field of uh, one uh, one field of which will indicate one field of that uh, form right so field and we can pass name make sure you spell this name correctly as in your uh, database so name name of type spring so i'm just gonna repeat this for two time another will be email email and password and make sure you if you are copying just don't have that uh comma at the end and if they basically uh, this uh, in the last video we saw that the response was uh, giving us uh, a JSON object of type user. So this time we are going to only have a response of type string. So now uh, we can just uh, write call of type string. So now uh, basically this is how my APIs are structured. You can see my poly library videos as well to. Uh, to understand better i'm not gonna repeat myself here so now go to main activity dot kt here we can uh, again take variable call of type call sorry and this call will be of type string and we will use retrofit instance dot api dot submit user and we can pass name email and password here now use call and call nq method nq function here and make an anonymous object 
and do callback of type string and implement the member function on response and on failure and basically this time on response I'm just going to make a snack bar uh, instead of toast toast is you know I, I believe toast is updated so snack bar looks good more good so let, let's create snack bar dot make and here we'll use that constraint layout variable constraint layout and here I'm just going to pass whatever response that we get from the response so response sorry response dot body and as a third parameter uh, this call snack bar dot length let, let's let's take length long and dot show don't forget dot show at the end otherwise the snack bar won't show up and in on failure i'm just gonna lock this lock the and failure t dot okay i forgot to call this t dot message and have this tag inside quotation or what uh, you can write whatever you want and that's it we don't really need to do anything else here so let's run our application all right so now when we click on the action button it should open a dialog box like this submit new user which we have as a title i'm gonna name uh, uh insert a new user uh group email id will be one two three one two four at one two three uh, dot com why not and password will be one two three four five six and i'm gonna submit the user and as you can see data is inserted now let me take you back to the uh the uh the database and see let's see what if we have a uh, new data inside our database or not so here's a database users and uh, it should have the third data here it is so one two four right one two three dot com one two three four five six so we have our data inserted into our database and that's how you insert data using retrofit library and uh, i think that's it for this video i'll see you guys in the next video where we'll see how to update data using the same dialog box that we have used in this video so please guys don't forget to like and subscribe it really motivates me a lot so i'll see you guys in the next video Bye bye